Hey, hey, Blue Table fans, Spencer here, and welcome to part three of our PHR Tips and Tactics series. In the last video, we discussed the smaller Type 1 walkers, and this week we'll be looking at their bigger, meaner brothers that rock the Type 2 chassis. There are four types of Type 2 walkers available to PHR players. You have the Odin, the Enyo, the Hyperion, and the Zeus. Just like the Type 1s, these four machines share the same basic stat line. Rocking Armor 10, a mind-blowingly slow speed of 2, with active countermeasures and a 5-plus passive save, which makes them the only things outside Shaltari to have a passive save. 2 damage points, these take a heavy slot, come in squads of 1-6 to six with standard coherency and sport the walker's special rule. And also like the smaller Type 1s, you can mix various types of Type 2 walkers in a single squad, allowing a lot of flexibility when putting an army together with these bad boys. So let's dive deeper with the Odin Anti-Armor Walker. So the Odin here is very similar to its little brother, the Ares, sporting the same weapons and everything. The one difference here is the Odin sports a pair of railguns instead of the single one the Ares has. So this pair brings Energy 11 two shots, two up accuracy, infinite inch free range, 24 inch countered range, move and fire of two, front and side arc with the coaxial special rule. It also has, as is the norm with Type 1 and 2 walkers, the RX-20 minigun for taking out any nearby infantry. With Energy 3, 3 shots, 3 plus accuracy, 36 inch free range, 12 inch countered range, move and fire 2, front and side arcs, and this also has the coaxial special rule. The Odin is a very straightforward machine with its twin railguns, but like all walkers it does suffer from being a bit slow. So it won't be able to keep up with faster targets, much like its smaller Ares counterpart. It works great if you use it to support other machines in the same squad, or even other squads if you want. Packing two Energy 11 shots means this thing can, and in many cases will, take down most anything it shoots out. Even enemy units with armor 10 get damaged on a 4+, plus, which means even the highest armor can take two damage points on a roll of a 6 to damage. The Odin hits hard, and at 65 points, you can easily fit quite a few of these into a 1500 point or higher list. The next entry in the Type 2 category is the Enyo Siege Walker. This guy, as one might suspect, is a building killer. And at only 65 points a model, quite the affordable one at that. I mean, this machine brings an RX 120 smoothbore pair, so just these two giant cannons with energy 10, two shots, three up accuracy, infinite free range, 24 inch countered, front and side arcs with coaxial special rule, and demolisher 2 special rule. It also has a little minigun for dealing with any unfortunate infantry. So this might lack the range of other machines, but it makes up for it by being a nightmare for any buildings. If you have an opponent with a lot of infantry hanging out in buildings, claiming objectives, or just harassing your passing units, the Enyo can make them think twice. With Demolisher 2, this thing does some pretty hardy damage to buildings, and unlike other models like the Ocelot for Shaltari, it's a flat number instead of a constantly changing number based on a die roll. This makes the Enyo much more consistent in its urban destruction, and means that on urban boards it will be able to cause havoc for enemies inside structures. Flank it with some Odins, or even run a unit of Ares alongside these things to provide them a little long range cover fire you can have an effective anti-building weapon at your disposal, which might make your opponent think twice about going into that building to try and get that objective. The third Type 2 walker is the awesomely named Hyperion Tank Hunter Walker. This 59 point monster is the scourge of any and all armored units I'm fortunate enough to get in the way. It brings to bear the mighty RX-1000 Battlefield Blazer, which is as long as the machine itself. It's just huge. This gun's quite the hard hitter with energy 11, one shot, two up accuracy, infinite free and count range, move and fire of two, front and side arcs, and the coaxial special rule in conjunction with the standard minigun. So you might be wondering what makes this worth taking over, say, an Odin. Well, it's cheaper for starters, but the main advantage is the range that this thing has infinite range, and unlike the Ocelot and the Scimitar counterparts, it still has a moving fire of two, whereas those other units have a moving fire of zero. So while this might not be able to move very fast, it can still move and shoot an infinite range energy 11 gun. That's huge in this game, especially on a city board. 
So one of the best strategies for these guys is board control. Now, due to their low speed, they won't be able to chase after faster enemies, but you can discourage them from coming into certain sections of the table. Keeping them flanked with either some Odins for extra anti-armor protection, or if you're tight on points, some Ares can also do the job. They'll throw out less shots overall, but they still provide plenty of powerful covering fire. If you do opt to go for this source squad with Hyperions and Odins, it's best to make sure you have them positioned to cover all advances since, like the Type 1s, these guys lack the ability to fire full 360. So you'll want to keep a couple of these guys positioned where they can fire to the rear of the Hyperions to give them some covering fire that way. Now there's one more Type 2 walker and it's perhaps the most important of all the Type 2s. This is the Zeus Command Walker. This is the sole command choice available to the PHR, and any squad it is in counts as a command choice, which means fitting multiples of these into a list is difficult enough without them clocking in 81 points apiece. The Zeus sports the RX-1 railgun, energy 11, one shot, 2 plus accuracy, infinite free range, 24 inch countered range, movement fire 2, front and side arcs, and coaxial with its minigun. So it has the same firepower as an Ares on a bigger, tougher chassis. Now, what sets this apart from its other Type 2 brethren is that instead of the normal 5-up passive save they have, this bad boy rocks a 3-up passive save. That's insane, and gives this thing the best passive save in the game, just barely edging out the Coyote, which has a 4+. plus. Okay, technically the Coyote's escape module has a 3-up, but it can't do anything other than sit there, so it's a bit of a moot point. The Zeus is also the cheapest command choice in the game by quite a bit. 81 points is still quite a bit, but when the next cheapest command unit comes in at 104 points, it doesn't seem so bad, especially when you consider that this is toting around an RG-11 gun that has a 3-up passive save. Yeah, that save doesn't mean anything to an ocelot that manages to get a shot off on it, but while this may be slower overall than an ocelot, it still has a slight advantage in that the ocelot has a move and fire of 0. Like the Enyo and Hyperion, you'll be best served playing this guy some Odin's or a separate squad of Ares for some extra firepower. In fact, one good setup when using Zeus with both types of walkers is something like this. So you have the Zeus as your commander, but you need to keep him safe. Well, you stick a few Odin's in the squad with him to provide him some extra anti-armor abilities, or maybe you even toss in a Hyperion, you know, for some super long-range firepower. But what happens when your enemy brings aircraft to take the squad out? Well, Type 2s have zero AA ability, so that's when a flanking squad of Type 1 Phoboses really comes in handy. Especially if you support them with some Ares themselves. Now, they won't be in the same battle group, but this tactic provides tons of anti-armor fire from the Zeus, Odins, and Ares, let alone if you do opt to bring a Hyperion. But the Phobos will provide you with some anti-air fire to cover you from strike fighters and bombers, and you'll have plenty of supporting fire to protect both the Zeus and the Phobos. Now this setup here of a Zeus, two Odins, two Phoboses, two Ares, and a Hyperion will clock in at a bare minimum 480 points without upgrading your commander or buying dropships. So yeah, it's an expensive method, but in a big enough game, this little tactic can serve you quite well. So those are the options you have when selecting from the Type 2 walkers of the PHR. Each of these machines serves a role in the battlefield, and all of them are useful. Unlike the Type 1s with the difficult to suggest mench it, I really feel like any of these are viable options. Yeah, the Enyo is short range and needs support, but at least its guns can still hurt enemy armor that might come rolling around the block at you. Now, like much of the PHR land units, these walkers do suffer from a staggering slow speed, which means that moving in any sort of timely manner deems extensive use of dropships and anyone worth their salt will gun for those dropships to either prevent these guys from having access to their only means of quick movement, or to try and down them while the walkers are still aboard in hopes of killing everything in one fiery blast. So you have to be careful where you deploy these guys because while they're very survivable, their slow speed means that without their dropships, the enemy will be able to just run circles around you. Still, despite their slow speed, the Type 2 walker is almost essential part of any PHR army. Bring up surge firepower to the table and having the only command choice the PHR can bring makes these a valuable asset to any player. So that's it for this one guys, I hope you have enjoyed. If you want to get a drop zone commander army painted by Blue Table Painting, then be sure to contact Steve at projects at bluetablepainting.com and he'll get you hooked up so we can get you an amazing looking army for an amazing game. 
Don't forget, you can also check out our selection of Drop Zone Commander models on our web store at bluetablestore.com, where we have secondhand models as well as painting offers for the various bundle packs that Hawk War Games sells. Thanks a ton for watching, you guys, and stay tuned for part four when I'll be discussing even more walkers as I cover every other walker in the PHR arsenal. And trust me, there's a few good walkers left. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you guys later.